Hello, Joe here from Infinity of Tacoma. Today I'm going to tell you about this beautiful 2020 Tesla Standard Range Plus that we have for sale. Uh, a lot of uh, different versions of the Model 3. Um, they've kind of changed a little bit every year since they first introduced the Model 3 back in 2017. Um, and there's also a lot of misinformation out there about Teslas and just a lot of cover in general. Teslas are so different than regular gas cars. Uh, that I tend to go a little bit longer on these videos. I try not to, but there's just so much to go over. So I will do my best to do this as fast as possible. But if you're really looking for some Tesla information, um, you know, aside from actual Tesla, I think we are pretty familiar with these vehicles. We've owned lots of different Teslas. We do pretty well selling used Teslas. So we have a 2020 uh, Standard Range Plus. Um, this one has 4,883 miles. A lot of people ask about full self-driving. This has a full self-driving computer. Uh, it doesn't have the full self-driving software. You have to pay additionally for that. It's uh, $10,000, a one-time lump sum if you wanna buy the full self-driving software. Or you can subscribe for it for $200 a month. You can do that all through your uh, Tesla app. So the thing with full self-driving, it's still in beta. So the people that do have the software and do have access to the full self-driving beta, it's still level two. So even though the vehicle is technically driving itself you have to keep your hand on the wheel and pay attention and be ready to intervene uh, so obviously it's nice but it's not like you can read a book do anything different take a nap or anything like that uh, because you need to pay attention be ready to intervene because it's still in beta and it still might do the worst thing at the worst time so you have to be ready to intervene um, and if you're not paying attention um, it will uh, deactivate and um, if you keep on not paying attention Tesla will actually take away the ability to use your full self-driving software until it's out of beta. Uh, that could be another year or two before it's at the point of being out of beta. I think when it gets to the point where it's out of beta and it's really level 5 autonomy where the, you don't really need to drive, the car can do everything on its own without supervision from the driver, then I think it would definitely be worth you know, $10,000 or $200 a month. I think for a lot of people, um, autopilot, basic autopilot has everything that most people need for daily driving. I've had a chance to use autopilot a lot in stop and go traffic in all different conditions and it's fantastic. Um, autopilot is basically designed to be used in the highway, um, though it can be used on, uh, you know, two lane roads, uh, four lane roads. Uh, you do have to be a little bit more vigilant, um, like I said, because uh, something might happen and uh, if you're not paying attention, it's your responsibility to intervene. So uh, the great things about Autopilot, and again, this comes with the vehicle, you don't have to pay extra for it, you don't have to subscribe for it, it comes with the vehicle, is you have Auto Steer. Auto Steer works awesome. Um, so basically when you have Auto Steer on, it will keep you uh, centered in your lane and it will uh, make, um, you know, follow the bends um, in the highway or on the road, so it will uh, turn slightly, which is definitely awesome. Um, but again, you need to pay attention because sometimes a vehicle might pull in front of you, uh, it might not see everything, so you always have to be vigilant and ready to intervene. An auto steer uh, combines nicely with the adaptive cruise control, so when you're cruising the highway, cruising in stop and go traffic, it's really nice because the vehicle is basically driving itself, it's keeping you centered in your lane and it's moving with the flow of traffic, though you do need to pay attention. Uh, but it really does a great job uh, battling driver fatigue. Whenever I have these systems on, I can feel a whole level of stress just melt away uh, because I'm kind of more in supervisor mode. The car is doing the work and I'm just uh, staying here supervising um, and I can kind of relax a little bit. Um, so really cool stuff and of course, when uh, the full self-driving does come out out of beta, it will be mind blowing. But uh, autopilot is um, very, very safe. Um, I think uh, the right now, the data suggests, and I'll pop this up on the screen, I'm just kind of guessing, but I think right now, uh, what Tesla is saying due do, 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 do to their own research, that when a vehicle is using uh, autopilot, they're averaging about one accident about every four million miles driven, which is pretty awesome. Uh, if that information is true, and I have no reason to believe it's not, 
uh, even if it's three million miles, three or four million miles, one accident, um, uh, one of the vehicles on autopilot makes this basically the one of the safest vehicles on the road uh, with autopilot activated, which is kind of contrary to all the misinformation you hear about autopilot, the government investigations and stuff like that. I'm pretty confident that all those accidents and crashes that you do see with autopilot, the driver is not paying attention. You know, I'm not gonna read this whole thing. I'll, I'll pull, put it up in the pictures. They're not following all these rules. So uh, it's uh, the driver's responsibility to pay attention ultimately with a level two uh, autonomous vehicle like this. Okay, so here we go. Um, so one of the awesome things uh, about Teslas is that they're always improving. Um, so when the Model 3 standard range or mid-range first came out in 2017, um, it didn't have quite the range that it does have in 2020. But also, if you buy a 2021 or 2022 Model 3 standard range plus like this one, it's gonna have uh, even more range. So here's a, this is from the Tesla's website, so I assume it's pretty accurate. So 2020 uh, Model 3 Standard Range Plus, just like this one, 0 to 60, 5.3 seconds, top speed 140 miles per hour, uh, EPA range 250 miles, uh, not too shabby. Um, the newer Teslas, I think it's a 2022 uh, Model 3 Standard Range, they actually switched battery technology. They're using LFP batteries and um, that's a difference. So there are benefits of LFP batteries versus the lithium ion batteries that they use in this particular generation of the standard range plus. Batteries are like the uh, engine in your vehicle. Um, so one of the benefits of lithium ion batteries is that they can release energy, they can release those electrons out of the battery a little bit more faster than an LFP battery so you'll tend to have better performance with a, a standard range plus with the lithium ion batteries. As you can see, zero to 60, I think it was 5.2, 5.3 seconds. Or if you go to the Tesla website and you look at a brand new Model 3, even though the range has increased about 275 miles, um, the acceleration has gone up to 5.8 seconds. Uh, that be, that's because it's using the LFP batteries and they can't release energy as quickly as the lithium ion. So just a little bit of food for thought. You know, if performance versus range is a little bit more important for you, then maybe, you know, getting an older standard range plus versus a new one uh, might be a better fit for you. Operating everything on this vehicle is through the touchscreen, uh, software upgrades, everything like that. And the one amazing thing about Tesla is it uh, unlike most other vehicles? You know, most other vehicles you buy a used car, and the older it gets, you know, the more outdated it gets, and you know, you could say the worse it gets. Teslas, in certain ways, uh, are kind of the opposite. Teslas actually gain features the older they get. So, you know, a Tesla, even though the Tesla might, might be physically a little bit older, have physically more miles. It might be a better car than it was two years ago because it's gained a lot of features. Tesla is the master of over their updates. Um, they've been doing it since I think 2012 when the Model S first came out and really uh, no other manufacturer has uh, embraced over their updates like Tesla. Um, and a big part of that is the way that they design their vehicles. Um, they're, they design these vehicles to use automated testing. So when they come up with ideas, they can implement them and test them a lot faster than a lot of the competition. And they can uh, make these updates and, and add these features at a fraction of the price as everyone else. So where a lot of manufacturers might wait two, three, four, five years to offer new features in their vehicle when they redesign it, Tesla is constantly rolling out over their updates, which improve the vehicle. Um, the one thing I like a lot is a uh, sentry mode um, and this one's a little bit low on charge to um, to show you but maybe I can uh, pull up a screenshot but basically sentry mode has been out for a while but basically it's a security system if someone vandalizes your vehicle um, it's gonna it's gonna notify you but now they've taken it to uh, another level up oh, looks like I disconnected the key by accident they've actually um, they've added a feature where you can view the live cameras on your vehicle when uh, sentry mode is uh, activated. So uh, I've done it a few times. This car is sitting in the lot. You know, we've, you know, late at night. Sometimes I'm curious. We've had a few break ins, some riff raff uh, walking around the lot. So sometimes I'll pop on the cameras in this one and look around and see what's going on at the dealership. You know, if I'm bored at, you know, 11 or 12 o'clock at night. 
a really cool you know feature that's something that came with an over the update tesla didn't charge any extra money for it and uh it just really is cool like how these cool features come about uh likewise you know some of the old stuff is a whoopee cushion um you have a boom box you have a sketch pad um and the other thing too is when you're supercharging um you can uh, play games uh for instance is this driving game when you're playing this driving game you can use the wheels the steering wheel and the gas pedal to play the game or uh you can watch netflix watch hulu youtube while the vehicle's charging supercharging is amazing no one can really touch touch the uh charging network that tesla has they have i think 30,000 superchargers all over the world uh locally they have a lot of superchargers so basically when you supercharge uh, it takes about 45 minutes for a full charge. So uh, there's one, we're, you know, we're in, you know, Tacoma. So there's two superchargers very close to us. Both are about five, 10 minutes away. One in Federal Way, uh, right at the mall. And then one at the Auburn Mall. So you can go charge your car. You can go do some shopping, grab a cup of coffee. If you don't want to do anything, obviously you can sit in your vehicle with the heat on that allows you to do that while it's supercharging or the air conditioning on and play video games or watch TV. Um, this slide here allows you to control the rate of charge of the battery. For the happiest life of a battery, Tesla actually recommends that you don't always fully charge it. Plus, when you fully charge a battery, it takes a lot longer for it to fill up. The way batteries are designed, um, the, empty, the, the emptier the battery is, the charger they fast, but as the battery gets fuller, the rate of charge will slow down. So most people will just uh, set this to charge max at 80 or 90 percent um pretty cool stuff it just it's really nice and then people also ask oh how long are the batteries going to last in a tesla well uh batteries kind of like an engine in a car aren't really designed to ever be replaced unfortunately sometimes it does happen due to defectives or what uh, defective you know issues or whatnot but this uh, has a long warranty on its uh, battery and drive unit i'll pop it up on the screen the current warranty on this just have to go look that up but um, um they've have enough tesla's on the road now where they can see what de battery degra degradation is like and it's about one percent a year so if you have a 20 year old tesla at one percent battery degradation it'll still have 80 percent of its battery charge uh you know after 20 years you think about a 20 year 200,000 mile gas car it could have emissions problems it could be leaking coolant and oil um you know it might not be making all its power either so uh in that aspect you know uh electric car with 200,000 miles on it might be a lot less maintenance headache and you know won't have you know leaks and things like that like you would with a gas car um and uh, maintenance uh, maintenance is very, very minimal on a vehicle like this. You don't have to worry about servicing an all-wheel drive system. You don't have to worry about servicing a coolant system. You know, I have an older Subaru. I just had to put catalytic converters in it because the catalytic converter went bad, causing the check engine light to went off. I had to, you know, spend all this money to do an induction and EFI service because it had carbon buildup in the engine. Um, it leaks oil. I have to add oil to it, you know, every so often when I uh, put gas in it. Those are things that you're never really going to have to deal with on an electric car like this. So not only will this save you money on gas, um, it's also going to save you money on maintenance. So those are all things to think about. All right, let's keep on moving along. <coughs> I know this video is taking way too long. Okay, so of Teslas, um, pretty much there's not a ton of options on them. They all are pretty much built one way, obviously, like the full self-driving, Things like that's optional, premium connectivity, which is kind of a no-brainer at 10 bucks a month. It basically uh, gives you LTE cell service in the vehicle, allowing you to stream music, stream uh, you know videos and stuff like that, you know, watch Netflix and YouTube. Uh, but colors, uh, so as far as I know, I think it's white and uh, like a graphite gray. Those are no-cost colors, any other color. It's an additional uh, money for that. I think the this shade of red is a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar option. Uh, likewise, we have the wheels. This has the upgraded 19-inch wheels. I think this is also a $1,000 option. And look at, we just added tinted windows. So um, if you're thinking about tinting windows, well, we just did it for you. Interior space is not that bad either um, because uh, 
with no, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just getting over cold, with no uh, drive shafts and transmissions. Uh, the, ba the floor is completely flat. Also because of the weight of the batteries uh, being in the floor, it gives it a really low center of gravity for amazing handling. It makes it very, very low rollover risk. This is probably one of the hardest vehicles to have a rollover in an accident out of any other car on the road. Lots of storage, there's my jacket in there. You got the charging cable. Uh, so charging, um, you can uh, charge from 120. That adds about five or six miles of range per hour. A more efficient way to charge is to upgrade your house to 240 charging, where that could add about you know 40 to 50 miles of range uh, per hour. And uh, you know, I commute, uh, I just had to put gas in my uh, Subaru and uh, I probably filled up with gas maybe once or twice a week and uh, I just filled it up with gas and I got 250 miles out of a tank of gas. So when you think about it, uh, with this uh, Model 3 with 250 miles of range, obviously you don't want to go all the way down to uh, the last mile of range. That's kind of pushing it a little bit too far. But uh, for most people, this is plenty of range for a daily commute. And when your house is your gas station, you plug it in, uh, you wake up the next morning, you have a full charge. That makes it a lot easier. And then with that amazing supercharger network, when you do have to uh, go on a road trip, you have that. And um, let me just show you real quick how to find those superchargers. They actually make it really easy for you. So you have this screen right here. Uh, part of the premium connectivity too is that you can have these Google Maps. Also, this is a nice accessory. It actually, usually these screens are uh, fixed, but the previous owner actually added a tilt screen. Really nice installation. I looked at it, I was kind of concerned that it could cause warranty issues, but they did a really good job with this. I'm not concerned at all after looking at. So you have the ability to have an actual satellite view, and this button right here, that's how you find your charger. So there's a uh, destination charging. Usually it's a uh, slow charging to, you know, the 240 charging or 120 charging. You're not gonna fast charge. So that's like if you go to a hotel or a restaurant or something like that, you can charge. But you wanna go all the way here. And this shows you your supercharger. So you can see there's the Federal Way one I was talking about, Auburn, 6.6 6 miles. So there's a good amount of uh, superchargers here in Washington. And if you pull out the map, you can see, look at that supercharging network. <coughs> absolutely humongous so you can travel <coughs> go to rural areas and you still have the ability to uh, to supercharge <coughs> you just have to plan accordingly of course obviously it's not as easy to find a supercharger as a gas station all right and lastly what I want to talk about is uh, safety obviously we we're talking about how using autopilot makes this a very safe vehicle but also the way it's constructed makes it safe. Not only do you have a very low rollover risk uh, because of the batteries being so low on the floor, but uh, you have a crumple zone that's about 60% larger than you would with a, a gas-powered car. Uh, so not only do you have the added convenience of extra storage with the frunk, but with no engine here, you have a huge crumple zone. So without an engine there, you have all this space to absorb crash energy during a frontal collision. So uh, don't take my word for it. Uh, this Model 3 is one of the lowest probability of injuries out of any vehicle on the road. Uh, very impressed by Tesla products. We currently have 12 pre-owned ones here. They sell very well. Uh, I think it's my opinion, you know, this is my opinion, but I've been in the car business 25 years. I've driven all sorts of cars, gas and electric. I'm pretty confident to say that this is the best uh, battery electric vehicle that you can buy right now, uh, including that amazing charging network, over there updates, uh, the ability to you know do so many things with your phone, uh, but also not just uh, one of the best battery electric vehicles on the road. I think it's actually also one of the best cars on the road as well. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you soon and have a wonderful day.